Hello, here we are. We're going to talk about graphing exponential and logarithmic functions. So let's get started. OK, so here's a problem. Now there's my sticky notes, so now I can write. Here we have a problem. Let's see if I can make this bigger. I think I can. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Well, that might be a little big, but let's move it over here for a while. Here's our problem. F of X. Equals one minus three to the negative x. Let's take this apart first. See that positive one? And note this, this is a minus sign. This is positive one minus three to the negative x. Well, do you recall that there's an invisible sign plus sign between one and the negative sign. So that what we really have here is positive one minus three to the negative X. Now that we have the positive one separated from the negative three to the negative X, we can actually move this one over to the right. Now, I don't know if I can erase anything. Probably not. Doesn't seem to be there. So I'm going to have to erase the old fashioned way like this. And move the plus one back here so that now what we have is familiar. We have the base three raised to the X. The X has a negative sign in front of it. The, the base three has a negative sign in front of it, and then you have a plus one. What this is, is basic graph F or basic function to the X. And these are the transformations we're going to make. We're going to put a negative sign in front of the three. And what that will do is cause it to reflect across the X axis. And we're going to put a negative sign in front of the X. Now this is called, that negative sign is called, let me make a little arrow over here, a reflection across the Y axis. There's a special name when you have reflections across both the x-axis and the y-axis, and that's called a reflection about the origin. Or across. OK, so let's check out our list of possible transformations. Reflect the graph of Y equals something to the X. Well, that's going to be three, but let's read the rest of it first. 
Reflect it across the, come back. There. Reflect across the Y axis, then across the X axis, then shift it up one unit. That's precisely what happens. We're reflecting across the X axis, reflecting across the Y axis, and then we have a vertical shift up one unit. So I do believe that A is correct. And if it's not, I'll find out. Okay. Reflect the graph of three to the X across. Oh, that's right. I didn't put the three. There we go. Now. Fantastic. Now we're going to graph this. Click the gray box. And I'm graphing a um, um, exponential function. This is the tool right there for the exponential function. I click. And now on the yellow banner, it says click the graph to plot the curve, your curve. I'm going to click in the middle. This gives me y to the 3x in its home position. It's not what I want. I have to come over to the transformation box and put my transformations in here. Well, let's see. I know I have a reflection across the x-axis, so I click the checkbox. I know I have a reflection across the y-axis, so I click the checkbox. Oh, look at the base. The base is not E. I'm going to have to correct that by backspacing over the E and typing a three. Three is our base. Then I'm going to have a vertical shift up one. I take the slider right here and I move it to where the note says one. Now I think I've got everything. So let us Stay. And then kind of hold our breath and check answer. Woo! We did it. All right. Nice work. That's how you graph. But we're going to graph a bunch. Next question. Oh, this is good. All right. I'm going to tell you what this is before I write it down. We are going to have, see this five in front of two to the X? Well, maybe I better write it down now. All right, let's get rid of this one. Ah. Uh, oh, come on. Okay. Our basic function is two to the X. Now, just in case you can't see this, now let's move that down. OK, now I'm going to get this. Oh boy, OK. In case you can't see what this is, I'm going to write it large over here. This is f of x equals 5 times 2 to the x. Uh, x minus 2 plus three. Please don't say five times two is 10. Two to the X minus two. Here's the argument. With base two, 
This is a five multiplying all, all of that. This five is a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. Now the negative two up here, I mean the minus two up here in the argument is a horizontal shift two units to the right. And you can find this out by taking the argument x minus two, setting it equal to zero, and solving for x. So we have x equals positive two. So the graph is going to be moving two units to the right. And that's our horizontal shift. Now, finally, at the very end, at the right end of the function, we have a plus three. That's always where your vertical shift up and down are going to be. Because we have a plus three, this is a vertical shift. up three. So five is our vertical stretch. The minus two is our horizontal shift to the right two units. And the plus three is a vertical shift up three units. All of this being done to poor little two to the X, who probably had no idea all of these changes were going to happen when it came to work today. Always use your imagination to make this more entertaining. All right, let's click on the gray box and click on the exponential function tool and click in the middle. And now here's where the real work is done. Our base is correct. We have um, a vertical stretch of five. We have no horizontal stretch or shrink. We have a vertical shift of plus three. We have a horizontal shift of plus positive two. We do not have a reflection across the x-axis. We do not have a reflection across the y-axis. And again, our base is correct. Oh boy, so let's save it. Let's Check it. Woo! Okay. Now we have to answer questions. Let me get my little card back up here. <clears throat> These uh, sticky notes are in Windows Tools. At least that's where I found it, found it here. So you can use these too. They're very handy. Now let's see. Let's come over here and read this. Shift the graph of y equals 2 to the x. Write two units. Well, I agree with that. 
but this one also says write two units. So let's keep um, reading. Stretch it vertically, but this one says stretch it vertically. And shift it down three units. No, shift it up three units. This is our answer right there. So let's do a final check. Good. We have f of x. Equals one fourth. Times. One minus e to the x. Let's go ahead and distribute the one fourth now. One fourth times one is one fourth. And we're also going to distribute the one fourth to e to the x minus one fourth e to the x. Now this is a positive one fourth. And remember that invisible plus sign here that separates the terms. So this is going to be negative one fourth e to the x plus one fourth. Now let's list our transformations. We are going to have a reflection across the x-axis. We are going to have a vertical shrink by a factor of, I mean, that's the way they usually word it, Factor of one fourth positive. Well, yeah, because that negative sign is the reflection. And then three, we're going to have, have a vertical shift up. Vertical shift. up one fourth unit okay all right let's do it here we go vertical shift One fourth. That is vertical shift. OK, no, it isn't. It's it's vertical shrink. That's what I meant. There is a vertical shrink of one fourth. There is a vertical shift of positive one fourth. And there's um, 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 a reflection across the X axis. And E is the base. So I have a vertical shift, a vertical shrink of one fourth. I have a vertical, how did that negative get there? Look at that. I did not put that one for that negative sign there. reflected across the x-axis. Now keep looking at it. I'm gonna save. Whew. Yeah. All right. All right, we are gonna reflect the graph of y equals e to the x across the x-axis. 
we're going to shift it up and shrink it vertically. I go for A. What does the other one say? I mean, there's usually one that's just so totally wrong. All right, this one is the shift across the Y axis. So this is the other one that could be right, except it says shift down. So final check. We have f of x equals one fourth the log of x minus five minus seven. Wait, gotta have a drink of coffee. Okay, now I don't need that again. That one fourth is in front of the function. The word log is hard to get used to, but you can do it. One fourth is out in front. That makes it a vertical stretch or shrink. This is a vertical shrink. This is the argument right here. That minus five is a horizontal shift to the right five units. Horizontal shift. Right. Five units. This minus seven at the far right end is a vertical shift down. Vertical shift down. Seven units. OK, so if we go left to right, which is rarely how they ask, we have one fourth, which is a vertical shrink. We have a minus five in the argument, which is a horizontal shift to the right five units, and we have a vertical shift down seven units. So that's one, two, three transformations. OK, let's go down here. Describe how the graph of f of x can be obtained from the graph of a basic logarithmic function. Shift the graph of y equals log x. Now let's see, we have two shifts here. And then shift it again. <laughs> OK. This and this, there's a shift, and then shrink it vertically. So we're going to have a shift and a shift, and we have to see, oh, this could be complicated. Okay, good. I'm so glad they put a number there. This is going to be the horizontal shift to the right five units. Shift it seven units down, down seven units. And it does say shrink it vertically. Let's see if we're right. Nice work. Now, let's see if we can live through this. Now I have to choose the logarithm tool. Right there. And click. There's the logarithm. Let's see, log of x in its home position. 
Notice it crosses the x-axis at one. All right, now, where do we start? We have a vertical stretch or shrink, yes we do, of one fourth. Oh my golly gosh. Okay. Okay, 0.25 is one fourth. We have no horizontal stretch or shrink. We have a vertical shift down seven units. So I go to minus seven, negative seven. We have a horizontal shift we do of five units to the right. So I go to positive five. And yes, we have to choose our base which since we don't see a base, the base is 10. Where is my box? Excuse me a minute. Oh, darn it, went away. How irritating. All right, I have to start again. Well, that can't be too bad, right? Huh. Okay, we're going to cancel. Did that work? I don't know. Now, if we get two graphs, we'll know I did not really cancel. All right, there's the logarithm tool. Click. Now. A vertical shrink of 0.25. Is that right? Yes. A horizontal stretch or shrink? No. A vertical shift down to negative 7. A horizontal shift to the right, 5. So that's positive 5. There's no reflection across the x-axis or across the y-axis, and the base was already set to 10. Let's see. Oh, thank goodness. Now what? Domain. We didn't talk about that today in class. How do you find the domain of the logarithm problem? You look at the argument, write it down here separately, x minus five. Now we're going to say strictly greater than zero. The argument cannot be zero and it cannot be negative, can only be a positive number. So I'll solve, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll solve for x plus five plus five. X is strictly greater than X is strictly greater than five. So that means now they want this in interval notation. If we had an X axis, infinity, negative infinity, and here's our five, all the numbers greater than five would be like six or seven or eight or all the little fractions and decimals and other nasty things 
um, in between the whole numbers there, in between the integers. So this is strictly greater than five, so X cannot equal five, but it can equal all of these other numbers that are greater than five, all the way out to positive infinity forever. So in interval notation, our domain would be five comma infinity in parentheses. That's what I'm going to type. Actually, I could use that. Five. Infinity. Let's see. Yay! The vertical asymptote. Of course, they ask about that a lot. In its home position, the logarithm has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, which is the y-axis. But we've moved it five units to the right. So here's x equals five right here. That's our new vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is x equals five. Check answer. And now we've gone on to one more problem. One more problem so that you can see the LN. We have four minus the LN of X. Now remember that the LN of X is really log base E of X. Now this positive four out in front, we're going to put it back there so that we have negative LN X plus four. That's a reflection across the x-axis. And this is a vertical shift up for units. All right, let's try this. Come on over here. Describe how the graph of f of x, see if I can make that bigger. Well, okay. Describe how the graph of f of x can be obtained from the graph of a basic logarithmic function. The graph of f of x equals four minus the ln of x is a transformation of the graph f of x equals the ln of x, they tell you that, by a reflection across the x-axis, and then a translation up is going up four units. Remember that shifts are sometimes called translations. Let's see if that's right. Yay! Let's graph. So, I go to the logarithm tool because ln is just a logarithm. I click, and now 
I do not have a vertical stretch or shrink or a horizontal stretch or shrink. I do have a vertical shift up for four units. I do not have a horizontal shift. I do have a reflection across the E X, <laughs> across the X axis, and yes, the base is E. Okay. Let's state it. Check answer. Damn it. Wait. Use my French. Let's try it again. There. There. No vertical stretch or shrink, no horizontal stretch or shrink, vertical shift. Four units up, four. There. There. Horizontal shift, no. Reflection across the x axis, yes. And the base is E. So there and there. Except I don't trust it. So I'm going to move this again. And I am going to turn it. Put it at four. Save. Check. OK. From now on, I'm going to do my vertical shifts and horizontal shifts. I'm going to do them after I click on the reflections. That way the signs don't change. It's very annoying. But there you have it. And if I were you, I would do the same thing. Important. Oh, I've not completed it. Oh, dear. OK. The domain. How could I forget? The domain. Is. Oh, OK. Well, X is strictly greater than zero. So we start at zero, but not equaling zero, and go all the way to the right to infinity. To infinity and beyond, if there were a beyond. Okay, so there we go, there we go. Zero, infinity. Check it. Yes. And our vertical asymptote is the line x equals zero, which is the y axis, because we did not shift the graph left and right. We flipped it over the x axis and raised it four units up, but we did not go left and right, so it still has the same asymptote x equals zero which is the y-axis y equals zero is the x-axis check okay are we done Let's do this. Oh. 
OK. <clears throat> Here's what we've got. F of X. Equals log. Base four. Of X. Plus two. The base is four. The only kind of transformation you're going to have is horizontal two units to the left. Let's try it. OK, the graph of F of X equals log base 4 of x plus 2 could be obtained by translating the graph of y equals log base 4 of x blank units to the blank. All right. Yeah, it's the only transformation. Duh. All right, 2 units to the left. Check answer. Graph. Logarithm. Click. Okay. The only, 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 only transformation is two units to the left. Now I probably blew it. I did because I have lost my black pop up box again. Just go ahead and clear it. There we go. There we go. I have one transformation. It's a horizontal shift to the left, which is negative two. And the base is four. Now I'm going to move this. And it's going to change the setting. It doesn't look like it, but it is. So I'm going to make it negative two again. And then I'm going to save. And then I'm going to check answer. Well done. All right. Domain. Take X plus two. Set it strictly greater than zero. Subtract two, subtract two. X is strictly greater than negative two, which means parentheses negative two, comma, infinity. Negative two. Infinity, yeah, infinity. Yes. And we just went two units to the left, so our vertical asymptote, which had been the y-axis, also went two units to the left. So our vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. Check answer. Are we done? Yes, it's problem 11 of 11. That's how you graph exponential and logarithmic equations with my math lab. Now go and enjoy yourselves and remember, when you have a reflection, click on the reflections first before you put in the other information or your signs will be changed. It's not supposed to work that way. And I'm about to send a note of complaint, which really is just to tell them, and it's not a complaint, it's just to tell them there's this problem, which is a really bad problem. OK, 
have a very good night. Right now, night is coming on. Bye-bye. And good luck with your transformations.